Let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstad from forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. We've been talking some forex. We've been talking some crude oil. We've been talking some Japanese yen. And I got a chart of that yen up here to kick <laughs> things off, Teddy. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. I think the yen is exactly where we should start. I, I you, listen. It's uh, you've made some outstanding calls lately, man. The yen is one of them. Let's do it, man. I got to chart up, and it is a, almost a one-way trip outside of that one reversal we got um, with the central bank over there. Uh, but yes, we let's start it off. I got it up here on a daily basis, Teddy. Uh, what are you looking at of this yen now that we hit one twenty-nine thirty-nine this morning, man? Well, you hit the key when you just said central bank. So uh, yesterday, and this is is breaking news across many news different sources. Uh, the Japanese Times and the, and the Financial Times were the ones that really first started it, was that uh, there's a divergence in what's going on with the Japanese uh, financial system. So the Bank of Japan came out yesterday and said that they are going to buy unlimited bonds to keep the rate at a quarter percent in uh, Japan. Okay, so that totally goes against what we said, remember, two weeks ago when we said that they're going to defend their currency? Yes. Well, you don't, def you don't defend your currency by buying your bond market. You, you do the opposite. You sell, sure. you sell your bond market, okay? So now the finance minister for uh, Japan is totally in the opposite thought. Like now they've obviously been on a low interest rate curve for a long time, they've been there the longest, okay? However, <clears throat> when it comes to defending your currency, which is something that they think they definitely need to do, you don't buy bonds, you don't try and produce rates, you know, you'd write, you gotta sure. go on the opposite, especially when the whole rest of the world is increasing rates. I mean, no yeah. one's talking about cutting rates, let alone supporting their bond market. Every, every central bank is cutting back on their purchases, you know? So so that's a very key thing that happened yesterday because remember we had the 130 price target? Well, I sure we do, coming, man. We, we were coming, we almost hit it yesterday, okay? And then this news came out. So now today, if you look at the yen, we spiked a little bit higher, okay? And now it's what I see right now is a little bit of a profit-taking mode because sure. you have the euro is up, the pound is up, the Aussie's up. So if all these other baskets occur, <clears throat> the major currencies are up, the dollar is under pressure. And you got to remember, the bond market did make a lower move low today, but that now they're a little bit higher on the day, you know. So it's just a little profit-taking move, you know, as far as that, that momentum is concerned. At least that's the way I'm viewing it right now. Now, as far as the price target, that line in the sand now is com completely... I, I have to say it's off the table because there's no way that you're going to be able to defend your currency and also hold your try and hold up your bond market at the same time. It's just it's 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 a tug of war that you can't go anywhere with. So that's why I think the yen is still going to be a bull. And if you, the one of the reason I I really truly believe that is remember two weeks ago when they first talked about defending their currency that was the first correction they'd had in a while and it's the only one they've had in the last month. Okay, yeah. and that was a that was a three day slide and it came back pretty fast. Because remember when we talked two weeks ago, I said, "Hey, I'm like, you know, I thought that they were they were, they were taking a little bit too much profit taking off of that high, and that's when I looked into it and saw how the central bank made that comment about defending their currency. So we had a three day slide there because of that. Now we have this divergence between the head of the finance ministry and also the Bank of Japan going in two different directions on what they want to do. So that means that that what happened two weeks ago." you're not going to get that kind of correction. So I think the pullback you have today is a short-term little profit-taking break. But with oil up, and especially if the interest rates start to hit their lows again, which I do believe they will, you know, then I think you're going to see our 130 price target. Now I would say that you might see the U.S. dollar yen at 140, especially if you see the Treasury bonds get down to like 125, you know, something like that. And could you talk a little bit about Teddy? Because I was a little bit surprised. So two weeks ago, you, you let us know the fundamental reason for that pullback, which was them talking about that they're going to kind of set that upper limit that they wanted, right? And was it mm -hmm. 130 or 131, Teddy? What was what, they? 130, what was 130 was the number, yes. 130 they, was the they number. They explicitly said 130. Okay, so you let us know that. Some great information that explains some of the pullback. I got it up here. We see it's it's almost the only three red bars on this chart, man, going back to March mm -hmm. 7th. I think we actually have uh, two other red bars prior to the one today. Um, then you come on last week, and you're a bull, which I was surprised with, considering that you would think— <laughs> Right. You uh -huh. would think that your 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 profits are capped. Right. You're in a trade right. potentially where you're bullish at 124, 125, wherever we are. 
and mm -hmm. the central bank over there is saying you're capped at 130. Can you walk us through a little bit? Because, I mean, great call from where we are right now. And I know mm -hmm. you did it last week, but for some of the listeners that might not have caught it, what was the transition that allowed you to maybe turn into a bull, even with the central bank talking about trying to keep it below 130 and you'd be buying it at 125. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because from where we are right now, it's outstanding call and even the fundamental aspect has changed. <laughs> Thank you. But I thought that was so cool, especially from what happened over the last you know seven days. Uh, well, I think one of the biggest things that helped me become a bull against the yen again was because at the same token, while the dollar was very strong against the euro, the pound and the Aussie, they were slowing. So the euro was the one that was under the most pressure, but the Aussie now is in actually, it's not just in a correction, it's in a bullish trend now. You know, every break has been a, it's been a higher move low. And when we started cool. to bounce with those two markets last week, you know, on certain points, that's where I could see that I w would look at the pound yen and the, and the Aussie yen. And I started to, I've got long, I've been long those now for two weeks as well, you know, because those trends are so solid that the yen is not just a bearer when it comes to the US dollar, it's a bear with every other currency out there. So that yes. means that as long as the dollar is still strong against the Aussie and is strong against the pound and is strong against the euro, and especially because the euro right now is off its lows. So any upside move it has now is just a correction. The dollar is very strong. So as long as the dollar is strong against those currencies and those currencies are strong against the yen, you got to be a bull. How is, the, how, is the, how is the yen going to become a bear against the US dollar, especially now because like I said, with, remember how I was adamant about how when it hits 130, it's going to be like a nuclear bomb. They're going to hit that, pull that trigger right yes. away. But yeah. now with the Bank of Japan going, rever Oof. they just reversed. They completely reversed their stance last yesterday. You it's know, great information, man. I, I appreciate you sharing it with all our listeners out there. We had a question, Teddy, earlier, yeah. uh, anticipating you were coming on the program from one of our guys mm -hmm. in the in the den, Dan, talking about the Canadian dollar. Can we talk a little bit okay. about uh, the Canadian dollar? Because that's got some movement going on today as well. Yeah, that is, I tell you what, that's become a choppy mess over the last two weeks. In fact, I was streaming about, I just got back from vacation last night and I did a nice. video and I talked about the US dollar Canada where I was like, this one is totally a side scratcher, you know, like because geopolitically it's 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 a mess between especially the US and Canada. Um, and that's even on a financial aspect too when it comes to our economy and a whole bunch of just, it, it's, it's just a yeah. complete zoo, you know. Now another thing yeah. that, as weird as the commodity issue is because you would think that with especially oil being strong and some other commodities being strong that the Canadian dollar be getting strength but <clears throat> I think that because of the slow of the way their economy is going and there's there's a big issue now as far as their debt level for their government and stuff like that that you never really heard this before COVID-19 messed up the Canadian economy in many many ways and I think it's going to be a bear U.S. dollar Canada is going to be a long-term bear right now. Man, we're going to have to start extending this to two segments if we get this type of action going on in the Forex market, Teddy. Listen, <laughs> thank it? you so much for the conversation, the education, as always, man. And we'll talk to you next Wednesday, Teddy. Thank you. Take care, Tom. Thank you. Take care, folks. Uh, we'll be right back for the final part of the program, folks. Stay